Bullet to Veteran Podcast. Thank you for your service. All right, welcome back, everybody, to Bulletproof Veteran Podcast. We're going to have a lot of fun today. This is just going to be a good old conversation with just a great guy trying to give back to the veteran community. And we have so many people on that, that, that that's kind of their motto. And I love having people that give back to the veteran community on. But I really like this gentleman because he's doing it in two of my favorite ways. He's doing it through coffee and wine. So I am very honored to have on the show Tim Cruikshank. He is the, uh, we'll call him founder of, uh, of Bone Frog Cellars and Bone Frog Coffee. So uh, Tim, welcome to the show. It's great to have you on. Hey, Jason. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's Like I said, it's an honor to have you on. I mean, I love the fact that you kind of blended two businesses together that I think if you, you probably hit 90% of America because you're either, yeah. you're either drinking wine or you're drinking coffee or you're drinking both. I think you're, you're, you got a good um, swath of the American culture right in there. Yeah, absolutely. I joke around with my business partner that, you know, we got you in the morning, we'll help wake you up. And then we got you in the evening to help uh, you finish off the day. Yeah, basically, you are the first aid kit for every uh, mother out there, I think. Oh, I like um, that. Yeah, if, yeah if, if, if you don't hit the coffee in the morning and a glass of wine in the evening for every mom dealing with the three-year-old, I, I, I don't know what is more important than that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Tim, as we do on the show, usually we like to hear a little bit about the people that we interview. So, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I retired in 2016 uh, after serving 25 years in the Navy. Um, I started out my career enlisted. I was a SEAL corpsman, uh, which is a medic, mm -hmm. um, and served uh, several platoons as a um, SEAL corpsman, and then got commissioned and ended up retiring as a lieutenant commander um, after 25 years. So, you know, um, serving... Uh, that many years, um, I think the biggest thing at the end of all of this is just a lot of experiences with a bunch of different people and uh, losing friends along the way. And I, I remember when I retired standing up there, the Navy has these big kind of uh, traditional elaborate retirements and kind of the genesis of these two companies started at my retirement. And I remember standing up there talking to the crowd uh, in this big auditorium. And I retired actually out of Fort Bragg. I was at a joint command there. And I'm looking out at all the people that had shown up for my retirement. And here I'm giving my speech and, and talking, but I'm looking at everybody in the eyes and remembering all these shared experiences that we had over at that time. I think it was 16 years of combat. It was crazy to, to think about that. But um, as I'm looking them in the eyes and I'm remembering all these things and remembering our lost uh, teammates and, and all that, it kind of hit me. And when I got back to the hotel room that night, I started kind of formulating the plan for these two businesses. The, the idea for the labels came first, the coffee and the wine came second. And the reason I chose these two things is I think they're really good vehicles for starting conversations. And we talked about it here just a couple minutes ago that, you know, a lot of times when we get together with friends, we're, we say, hey, let's get some coffee and hang out and we'll talk about whatever it is we're going to talk about. Coffee is a great conversation piece. And the bone frog, when we put that on the label, people want to know what that is. And it, it starts a conversation to talk about what the bone frog is. And the bone frog was originally drawn by a friend of mine, Keith Kimura. Uh, he was also a SEAL corpsman. And when he passed away, the bone frog became this iconic symbol in the SEAL teams that stands for those guys that gave their life and in the line of duty and for our freedoms and, and for our country. And I wanted to use the bone frog name and image um, for our co company to start that conversation and honor the legacy of those guys that gave everything. I changed the bone frog a little bit. I redrew it. Um, in honor of Keith, 
Uh, I put the, the trident in the pelvis. I changed the head a little bit. Um, but the meaning is still the same. And it's right. the same way with the wine. And, you know, when we go to these parties and I put down a bottle of the bone frog wine in the middle of the table, people stop and they look at it and they're like, what is that? And that's what I want. I want people to ask what it is so we can start explaining it. So we can keep saying these guys' names. Um, I, I kind of feel this uh, sense of duty to keep saying their names. So their, their legacy is not forgotten and their, their, their memory is, is uh, kept alive in the, in the hearts and souls of every American. And, and that's, that's kind of how this all started. Yeah. And I, I love the fact that you, you kind of focused in on that whole idea of a conversation. I think it's so important that as veterans, we keep that conversation going and to choose coffee and wine as kind of the vehicle for that is to me, it, it, it's almost like, yeah, of course that's what it should be because exactly what you said, you sit down for a cup of coffee, you go for a cup of coffee. You sit down over wine and dinner. You know, I come from an Italian family. I'm Italian and Irish, but my, my, my Italian side was very dominant. Um, and there's two things that we did. We sat and we drank espresso after our meal. And while we were having our meal, we had wine. And you talked. And you got together with cousins who you hadn't seen in a few years. Or, you, you know, it was Christmas time and you only saw them during Christmas. And you caught up and you had these long conversations and you know, the aunts and uncles would tell these old stories about, you know, grandma and grandpa and, you know, living in Calabria, Italy and, 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 you know, what it was like during World War II yeah. and all this stuff. Exactly. And, and that would, that would kind of bleed from the wine into the coffee, into nuts and cake and all this other stuff. And it, it was this whole event. And it's awesome that you've now taken both those things and you're doing that for now the military to have that same conversation and using the labels and the art and all of that to spark that and get it going. And then also to enjoy some great product. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> exactly. I think it's so important that we uh, start the conversation. I, I put this saying on my website that says, you know, I think we die twice once when we stop breathing in again, when people say our name for the last time, mm -hmm. it's, it takes us back thousands of years. And I, I have this image in my head that, you know, when armies fought thousands of years ago, they would sit around after their epic battles and they would, they would drink something uh, around a fire or a table and they would share uh, these experiences and they would talk about the, the epic battles and they would uh, talk about their friends, uh, heroic acts or loss of life or whatever it was that they would talk about. But that's what kept the history going. And that's what, um, that's what our purpose is here is to talk about these guys and say their names and, and talk about the things that they did. So we never forget that. And so future Americans hear about the sacrifices that they gave for our country. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. reminds me, I, I remember I was in, in college. Um, I was going to, uh, I think Prince George Community College was down in Maryland when I was stationed at Andrews and I was taking actually a philosophy course and we had to write a paper on immortality and was it possible? And we had to quote different philosophers and stuff like this. And the thing that I actually focused my last paper that had to deal with that topic on was the fact that you are immortal as long as somebody is still, still telling your story. Yeah. But like you said, yeah. you die yeah, twice. Right. It, it's, it's so true. It is so, so true. Um, but again, you're not only just doing the conversation, okay? You're also giving back to the community through different organizations and things like that. Um, so uh, talk a little bit about that. What, uh, what organizations have you guys partnered with um, to actually give back to the community uh, and especially, specifically the Navy SEAL community? Yeah, and I think that's probably the most important part because when I was standing up there and I was thinking of this whole thing, I wanted, I felt like I was leaving everybody behind that we'd been together for all these years. And now I'm 
leaving them behind. And I, when I became a civilian, I wanted to find a way to give back, to continue giving back to the community. And this was my way of doing it. And so a portion of our proceeds uh, from every sale goes back to several different foundations that support uh, the Naval Special Warfare community. And so the first one that we chose was the Navy SEAL Foundation. And the reason why I, I chose them, because they were an integral part in helping me and my family when I was forward deployed, my wife um, had stage four cancer. And they oh, wow. helped her get from Germany. They helped fly her back to Bethesda for testing um, during a very stressful time in our lives. And um, without question, just jumped right in and helped her get there. And I had three small children at the time and they took care of them. And so that was a, probably the most important one. We also have partnered with uh, the Navy SEALs Fund. Okay. Uh, the uh, SEAL Veterans Foundation and now just recently the SEAL Legacy Foundation. Um, all these different foundations are supporting different aspects of guys' lives, whether it's supporting uh, their families, uh, the kids, the veterans, uh, guys with disabilities that are retired. I'm trying to cover the entire community and give back so we can help everybody from A to Z. Yeah. And I, listen, you're hitting it with all of those organizations, especially for the special warfare uh, um, fighter out there. Uh, and I think it's awesome that you you're not just stopping at, it, you know, the individual veteran or something like that. You're looking at the kids who have lost a father or, or you know, yeah. or uh, the, the wife who lost the spouse, however that worked out. Um, it, it's so important to to help those people because they are going through life now with this wound that they, they, that will be with them forever. Yeah. Um, and it's so important that we make sure that the kids are going to college, that they're not, you know, falling into bad habits on their own, not going down a dark path that we see so many uh, military members struggle yeah. with. Yeah. We definitely don't want to see somebody go down a dark road because they lost a loved one. You know, right. that's so it's, it's awesome that you're kind of trying to hit all those those different marks. I think the other biggest thing, Jason, is that, you know, right now we're we're very focused on the special naval special warfare community. But our hope is to get big enough that we can help um, all services across the board. And mm -hmm. we joke around that, you know, we want to hold we want to be able to hold up one of those big cardboard uh checks as we're giving it back because the bigger we get the more we can give back and i remember when we gave our first check um we had made enough money to 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 give back our very first check and i i was running around the house showing the kids and i'm like look i actually did it i, I really did it um you know gave me a big lump in my throat that we could give money back to these foundations to help my brothers that are still out there tip of the spear fighting uh, to keep us free yeah I'm, I'm going through it right now. I'm, I'm doing this 5k for one more wave. And, you know, every time I see somebody make a donation or sign up, I'm like, I'm so close to being able to hand that check over and be like, look, this is for you guys. I did this and, and I, I can't wait for the kind of end result and be able to hand that over. It's such a uh, gratifying thing uh, to, to be able to do that. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Um, let's talk a little bit about the coffee. We'll start okay. there. Yeah. All right. So this is basically the way I was reading about it. This is true farm to table coffee. You are sourcing the beans. Um, they're, now they're mostly from Central America. Yeah, Central and South America. Okay. And so you're, you're sourcing the beans. They are grown for your specific blends, correct? Yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah which so is, I'll tell you, which is awesome. Yeah, it, it's really cool. Yeah. So we were fortunate enough, um, you know, as we're getting started, uh, trying to figure out, you know, you know, we talk about in the military subject matter experts, right? So mm -hmm. get out. And I didn't know anything about coffee when I got out of the military, but I found people who did people that wanted to mentor me and teach me and, you know, help me down this path. And so, we were fortunate enough to find a guy named Dave Stewart. He was the original owner of Seattle's Best Coffee. Okay. 
he loved what we do and he jumped on board and wanted to help us and mentor us uh, and get this thing going. And so um, Dave Stewart has been roasting coffee for over five decades. And, you know, he was one of the original iconic uh, coffee roasters here in the Seattle area that helped this whole coffee craze in the world kind of take off between him and Howard Schultz. Um, he was bought out by Howard in 2003, but he continued to keep roasting. And when that happened, uh, Dave and his brother, Jimmy, um, Jimmy kind of broke off and started with his wife, um, these coffee farms in Central and South America. And he provides the beans, the green beans to Dave who roasts them. And so you've got that direct trade of the highest quality beans that you could possibly get uh, coming straight to Dave here in Washington state. And so when you order coffee from us, it is roasted same day and usually arrives on your doorstep within two to three days. It's pretty amazing. And so the quality of the beans makes a huge difference uh, to our customers. And it's pretty amazing. And, you know, we, uh, when we sat down to create this company, we wanted to make sure that we had the highest, highest quality products across the board. One, because it's uh, representing the SEAL community. Mm -hmm. And two, if we didn't, we were going to be sitting here with a lot of, <laughs> a lot of product that uh, we were going to have to consume ourselves. Yeah. And so um, we made sure that we had the highest quality product possible. Well, and it definitely sounds like that's where you guys are at. When you have such a, you know, kind of small, small mindset on the product, not on the business. The business has a, has a lot to expand and, and can grow. But if you keep the idea small with the product where you're, you're roasting direct to, to customer, basically, like you said, you're roasting and then two, two, three days later, it's on the doorstep. Yeah. When you keep that, that quality is just, it's going to be amazing. And you guys have a, a, a few different uh, roasts. You have the, the bone frog, which is your, your medium. That's kind of like your, your, your signature blend. We'll yes. call it. Yeah. Um, you guys have the, uh, it was to see the, Oh, the Frogman. the Frogman was yeah. the dark roast. Yes. Which is very cool. The, 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 the label on it is, is very cool. I, I encourage everyone to head over to the website and take a look at the packaging because um, like you said, it definitely is a conversation starter. The, the, the packaging is awesome on these, on these bags. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just had on the show, the authors from Sons of Valor and you partnered with them to make another medium roast that's out right now. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, so great. So Brian uh, Andrews and Jeff Wilson, both Navy veterans. Um, Brian uh, was a submariner nuclear officer and Jeff Wilson was a vascular surgeon. He was actually the command surgeon at one of our um, special operations commands in, in Damnet. And so they, when they got out, they, um, they started writing and becoming authors and, and, <laughs> becoming international best-selling authors. Yeah, in yeah they, they're, best they're no slouches. <laughs> they're amazing. And their yeah. books, you know, if you get a chance to, uh, to buy their books, I'm actually shamelessly right back here, you'll see their, their most recent one, uh, Sons of Valor, uh, which is this bag that we partnered in a specialty blend for them. It's a medium to dark roast. It's really, really good. And, uh, on the back of the bag, you'll see kind of um, about their Sons of Valor book launch. Uh, we are so proud to be partnering with them on this project and helping to promote their books and, you know, two amazing uh, guys, you know, these Navy veterans. So um, super, super happy about promoting them. Yeah. And they're big into giving back to the Navy SEAL community too. As we talked yeah. about when I interviewed them, I mean, their books are based on Navy SEAL teams and they feel this drive to give back to the community that they've taken so much inspiration from for what they've been writing. Um, so it's very cool that you guys have decided to work together and, and, and give back in that way, which is, which is again, what it's all about. I mean, yeah. it really is. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, 
where can people find the coffee specifically? Okay, because you now you we, we have the wine side, but we have the coffee side. So where can people purchase the coffee? So if you go to bonefrog coffee.com, go to our website, check it out. We also have a um a light blend um called Zen Frog. Oh, okay. And yeah. So Zen Frog uh talks about the mindset of staying calm in the midst of chaos. Our frogman is um kind of a retro World War II, you know, look back at the UDT Frogman. But you can go onto the website and uh, order it from there and we'll ship it straight to your house within two to three days. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, now, you, so all the coffee's roasted there in Washington? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it basically, it, it gets to Washington. Now, how involved are you with making like the actual note decisions, the roasting notes, things like that? Have you learned? You said you didn't really know anything about it. Yeah. Now you're, you're kind of in and you have uh, this mentor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where are you at with learning? Oh, so we're very involved. Um, okay. The process of choosing the blends is uh, it, there, there's a lot of detail that goes into it. And um we go and we tell them what we're looking for. And then we sit down after they create these blends and we do these taste testing. It can be pretty intense because if you drink enough of this coffee, you know, you're getting heart palpitations and everything. So <laughs> they teach you how to do this. But we are involved in every blend that we make and exactly the tasting notes that we want. And we're really very conscious about not having a, any bitter taste. We want it to have a smooth finish. Um, and very specifically the tasting notes of, of what we're creating. Yeah. So that tasting is that cupping that, um, exactly. It's yeah. Cupping. Yeah. So that's, if anybody's ever like YouTube or, or, or looked at, uh, you know, people that score coffee, they do this thing. It's called cupping and it's with a spoon and a small cup and the grounds are in it. And you know, they're, they're like almost slurping it kind of, it's exactly like wine tasting. The, the parallels between coffee and wine are very similar. Mm -hmm. There's uh, something called terroir, a uh, French term that talks about the, the soil and the water and, you know, the tasting notes, everything that goes into creating a specific bean. They're doing cupping uh, down in Central and South America on these beans before they even get here. And then okay. we do it again once we create the blends to make the perfect blend. Uh, so it's very consistent every time um, it goes out to the customer. Yeah. Very cool. Now, yeah. uh, how does it get out to the customer as far as, is it, uh, can you get it ground whole bean? Uh, I think I saw some K cup on the, uh, on the website as well. Yeah. So we have K cups okay. um, and that was a whole nother process of creating those, but they're incredibly fresh. Nice. The, the beans can go out whole bean, all the way, you know, from French press down to espresso. Um, so you right. choose exactly how you want it and we'll send it to you. That's very cool because I, I know there's a lot of companies that, that are in the, the more, um, you know, uh, uh, um, choosy market for coffee where you're, you're, you're asking for specific flavors and notes and things like that. But usually on a lot of those, it's, it's either ground or whole bean. So you're actually going a little deeper and allowing the customer to choose how they actually want that ground. Exactly. So, you know, they can uh, on the website, choose it, the exact grind that they want all the way from rough to very fine. That's very good too, because everybody has a different method for brewing the coffee, whether it's pour over, whether it's French press, like you said, espresso, um, you know, uh, some, some people are just using just the, their old percolator that they might have, you know what I mean? Uh, the same one that, you know, their yeah. mom was using in the seventies during a poker game. Um, yeah. you know, everybody's got a little bit of a different, different way of brewing their coffee and, and you can actually get it just right with the, with the specific grind. So that's awesome. Yeah. And we break it down right on the bag. Um, it shows you exactly the temperature of the water. I mean, if you want to get into that much detail, the temperature of the water that you should be brewing your coffee with, uh, to get the, the perfect cup of coffee. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like you said, the parallels to the wine world, 
um, the craft beer world where you have all of these different tasting notes, you have so much going on the yeah. process to get from your product to a final brewed cup of coffee. Um, there's a lot going on. It's not just, uh, it, this isn't Folgers crystals, you know, and, and throwing it in, in the, in the old, uh, uh kitchen aid. You know? <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely. Uh, very cool. Very cool. Um, so I, I have to talk about wine. That'll have to be the next thing. Okay. So you, you decided to, which came first, actually, I, let me ask you that. Did the coffee or the wine or did it, it was it really at the same time? I, I would say I probably, I started working on the wine first. Okay. The wine took longer and I, I worked on the wine for quite some time and with alcohol, there's a lot that involved in it. Of course. The wine is, you know, it's ages for 18 months in French Oak. And so that in itself takes time. Um, but logistically with shipping alcohol across state lines, there's a lot that's involved with it. I started it on my own, but I, I needed again, a subject matter expert. And that's where my business partner, Dave Johnston comes in. And it was Dave that um, helped me and guided me through this and still does on the business side of things. Dave has a extensive background in venture capital. Okay. And starting, he started a lot of different businesses. And so he's kind of my sanity check. He's the one that uh, really helps me with the business part of things and um kind of keeps me on the straight and narrow (laughs) you gotta have that you gotta have that person that kind of kicks you down the right road when you need to be kicked (laughs) yeah absolutely so you you said that you do 18 months in french oak yeah so for for people that maybe don't know there is a very big difference between american oak and french oak the tasting notes that you get from that. Then there's also uh, the option for stainless steel as well, especially with yep. Chardonnays and sing- yep. things like that. You'll see a yep. lot of Chardonnays have been moving to the stainless steel. They've kind of, I'd almost say it's 50, 50 now between the American Oak say, and, and the, and the stainless steel. I see a lot of them now, uh, especially here on Long Island. Yeah. Um, reason that you chose French Oak and, and the, the, let me add, add to that why I'm asking. Um, here on Long Island, the vineyard that I worked at, um, we did a lot of Merlot. And I know that you are uh, uh, very proud of your Merlot. Um, our Merlots here are very popular. Uh, most of them are American oak. The reserves tend to be in French oak. So when they do a reserve, they'll do it in French oak. It's a little smoother, a little bit of it, it, it doesn't have as much tannin to it. Um, why did you go with the French oak for your main uh, um, barrel? So sitting down with our winemaker, Caleb Foster, um, Caleb, when we're talking about tasting notes and the depth of flavor felt that that was the right way to go. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we, we really trusted him on, on that. Um, and that was our first vintage in 2018. And so I think it gives it a, a, a depth and a complexity that the American oak doesn't. Yeah. I think I, I'm a fan of French oak Merlots uh, and, and cabs for that mind, but especially Merlot, I think that it, it, it lends itself to a, uh, I, I think it mellows it slightly um, and it makes it, um, it, I think it brings out the fruitiness of the Merlot a little bit more than the, the, the American does. Um, yeah. It, it gives it a unique flavor. Yeah. Um, I, I think, so the Merlot, our Merlot is fantastic. And mm-hmm. I, you know, for a lot of people, it's kind of fallen out of, of favor. Um, but I think it gives it kind of a, a smooth finish on the palate. Yes. A little bit more elegant uh, and balanced mm-hmm. uh, than the American Oak. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can blame sideways for Merlot falling out of flavor. You know, that, <laughs> exactly. that movie no, you're destroyed exactly right. Merlot and I will never forgive them for it. Um, 100%. Because like I said, here on, on Long Island, the, uh, Bedell Vineyards where I worked was known for, he was Mr. Merlot. 
That was his nickname here on Long Island. And you would have, I worked in the tasting room and you'd have these people come in and we would always be pushing our Merlot because that was our main, it was our signature, you know, grape. And people would, you have a Pinot Noir? You're only asking for Pinot Noir because you just watched Sideways. Get away from me. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> and the funny thing about this is, um, you know, because everybody now goes straight for cab. They're, you know, they want the cab. And, you know, when we do little tastings and stuff, I'm like, try this. Try the Merlot. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll try it. And they're like, wow, this is probably one of the best Merlots I think I've ever had. And I said, yeah, right. Um, it really is, but the movie, um, man, it put a dent in the, the Merlot sales. Uh, things are starting to come back yeah. and it just takes time and education and talking to people and getting them to try your Merlot. Yeah. yeah you gotta, it's you gotta, a, you gotta fight back Hollywood. You gotta fight it back. <laughs> oh, God, crazy. Yeah. Um, now your white is a Chardonnay. Now that is also in French oak. No, that's actually in stainless steel. It is in stainless steel. Okay, great. Yeah. 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 So we just bottled our Chardonnay um, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we, we were down there trying it. And we had a few sommeliers there trying it. And it came out be actually better than we thought it would. Um, and our winemaker, it's funny, because we're like, oh, my God, it's so great. It's all, you know, we're talking about this stuff. And he just goes... Yeah. Yeah. That's what you wanted. And mm -hmm. I go, yeah, but it's perfect. It's like amazing. <laughs> but yeah. Where is your, uh, where's your winemaker from? Uh, Eastern Washington down in Richland. Okay. Uh, if you're familiar with that. Uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with the area, but he is yeah. uh, from the United States, which is, yes. which is good. You know, hey, listen, you gotta, yep. everybody and, brings uh, somebody over from France. You're, you know, it, come on. <laughs> yeah so it's a uh, columbia valley aba okay um and you know washington is now starting to rival california as some of the top wines in the united states uh they're we're producing some really high quality wine uh in the state of washington so it's pretty exciting yeah, that's it's the same thing for New York. You know, you're you're constantly fighting for shelf space against the California wines, especially in the local liquor stores and things like that. You're really you're trying to get your product on the shelf, which is not an easy thing to do in the liquor space. Very different than say the coffee space, but the the liquor space to get your product out there on a shelf in a liquor store is is it can be daunting, yeah. Um, yeah. and especially because you're going against these giants from California that have a lot of money behind them and a lot of name recognition. Um, you know, if your wine is from Napa, you're already kind of, oh, I want a wine from Napa or I want to, I want a wine from Sonoma right. Valley, whatever okay. the case may be. Um, so Long Island deals with it as well. We're, I think the biggest hurdle for us here on Long Island for our wines is the price point. Um, they still haven't gotten the price point down to a place where the average just, Joe Schmo wine drinker who's not used to spending $45 for a bottle is willing to put that money forth just yet. I think it, it turns some people off, but they're getting there. Yeah. Um, as, as we plant more fields of, you know, as, as the vineyards grow, uh, the price is coming down because, you know, the, the, the wineries are, are producing a lot more. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, if there's a, if it says Napa Valley or um, Sonoma on the bottle, there's already name recognition there. And so people are more willing to spend that kind of money on a bottle uh, from there. It's, I think, important for us, you know, in Washington and New York to talk about it and to get our wines out there and have people try them. So they realize that, you know, there's some really high quality wine coming out of these areas. Yeah. 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 And there's people that are, are, doing some really cool things in the wine space. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure if you know uh, of the band tool, um, yeah. the lead singer of tool. Of yes. He opened up his own vineyard and uh, where is, is he? I think it's Arizona. He's doing. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. It's like yeah. not in a place that you uh, really off the top of your head would have thought it's either Arizona or New Mexico. It's one of the two. It would definitely not a place that like you think wine right away. It was very cool. Like uh, they did a great documentary about, you know, what he was doing. It was on YouTube and 
it's just a labor of love for him. He just wanted to do it. And yeah. it's very cool. Where's he sourcing his juice from? Um, I, I think it's all being grown there. Really? Yes. And that's the weirdest thing about it because the climate's not right. Not so much. No. And that's what he talks about. And that's like his whole thing. <laughs> yeah. It's very strange. It's very, very strange. Uh, I'll have to, uh, when I, when I put the, uh, uh, edit the, uh, the episode together, I'll, I'll make sure I mention where they could find that, that, uh, episode on, on YouTube, because I, I think listeners would, would find that very cool. Yeah, I think uh, so. Yeah. yeah. But, um, your stuff, all your, all your grapes are coming from Washington, correct? Yes, they do. Okay. Actually, we're sourcing from some of the oldest, uh, vineyards here in the state. Um, which is pretty cool. Connor Lee and Dionysus, um, Elephant Mountain, uh, really great uh, vineyards. Uh, so we're sourcing some just outstanding uh, juice coming from these vines. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, and about uh, how how many? Um, where are you guys at for cases per year at this point? Where uh, are you? Are you kind of? I don't want to say mass producing, but you are you producing on the level of of the vineyards in your area or are you still considered small? We're considered very small. Very so small. we're kind of a boutique winery right okay. now. And so we started out with 400 cases mm -hmm. um, with our 2018 vintages, the Cabernet and Merlot. Um, started small and we did that on purpose so we could... Um, we could get it to the right people. We don't want to be a winery that's in uh, grocery stores and things like that. We want to make sure that we're um, marketing this and getting it out to the right people. So we are in a few uh, private clubs, a couple uh, high-end restaurants in the, in the area and in Southern California. Um, but then we're also direct to consumer off the website. Um, we think that by doing that off the website, we can save a lot of the cost, uh, that goes directly to the customer because we don't have, um, a brick and mortar for overhead. Right. Um, our next 2019, we increased a little bit. We're at 600 cases and we also added in another hundred ish cases of the Chardonnay. The Chardonnay was really, you know, the, the ladies were pushing that, um, they wanted a white wine and we made sure that we got him a white wine that uh, is outstanding. The, the Chardonnay, matter of fact, um, we wanted to have tasting notes or a little bit lighter and crisper, uh, kind of um, light summer fruit, so to speak, rather than the big oaky buttery Chardonnays. Mm -hmm. And so I think this one came out really, really nice. It's going to be a great uh, wine for this summer. Yeah. Well, listen, choosing the stainless steel, uh, I am not a fan of, Oaky Chardonnays. Um, I'm not Chardonnay is not my go-to to begin with, uh, but I I do enjoy the stainless steel ones. I do enjoy. So uh, that's kind of cool that you went that route. I I, I like that. They're nice. <laughs> they're they're kind of light and yeah. crisp and fresh, and and people really enjoy them. They're very drinkable and and very refreshing. Yeah, for sure. And like you said, just in time for the summer, which is the perfect time for that. Yeah, <laughs> for for sure. Um, sure. so uh direct on the website now does that ship to all 50 states or are there still some weird laws out there that you have to navigate that was part of the learning curve jason so yeah. we shipped to 32 states okay. there's still some states that have prohibition laws that we can't ship to mm -hmm. and then there's just a few sh states that um because you have to pay a license fee per state uh, where you ship to. And there's just a few states that don't order a, a lot of wine. And so um, it's too expensive to, to ship to those states. Um, but we ship to the majority of states, okay. um, which is really good. And, and we've been doing that. We're, we're shipping nationwide. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah. great. I remember when I worked in the tasting room, uh, there were all these weird rules because we'd get so many people that were on vacation. They wanted to ship their wine back home. And we would do that for them, but there was like, oh, we can't ship to this state. Yeah. And, you know, this was back in 2006. So I'm sure the laws were even wackier then. It was like, can't ship to Florida, but you could ship it if you bought it from Florida <laughs> right. over the phone. Yeah. 
but you couldn't buy it there and then ship. Like it was really weird stuff. So yeah. you, you definitely have to navigate that. But so if somebody wants the wine and they're not in Washington, go to the website and navigate through that. And it'll let you know if you can yeah. uh, yes. purchase it. Bonefrogsellers.com. Okay. Um, and we can ship. And the other great thing is there's summer packaging. So wine used to be kind of a seasonal ordering mm -hmm. thing. Um, but now they have cold shipping that, uh, you know, it's a little bit more expensive, but if you want your wine during the summer months and say you live somewhere hot, like Texas or Arizona or Southern California or something like that, we can still ship during the summertime, uh, which is really, really great. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, wine is temperamental when it comes to temperatures. Let's be honest. We do not, uh, proper storage is very important. Also with light, you know, you, if you're, if you're going to buy good wine, make sure you're taking care of that good wine. Know yeah. what temperature you're supposed to store it at. Keep it out of direct sunlight, all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's good. Um, so you just got back from actually an event that uh, for it was the Navy SEAL Foundation. Yeah, yeah. Please tell me a little bit about that because we were talking <laughs> prior to that and then you had to drive down. It was in California, correct? California, yes. It was in the Sacramento area. And I got asked by the Navy SEAL Foundation to go down and um, represent them and, and speak at this event. It was an event called Shooting for the Stars. It was their fifth annual event. Um, it was a trap and skeet shoot and uh, really great turnout for this event. And um, the, the host, his name is Mark Castle, mm -hmm. uh, retired commander Navy SEAL. Uh, that's been putting this event on both in the Sacramento area and in um, Nevada every okay. year. And so the proceeds of that uh, event go back to the Navy SEAL Foundation. And uh, we had just a, a great time down there. Really great. And you actually spoke and all of that. You spoke to the, to the group. How did that go? <laughs> it went really, it went really well. And Mark was giving me a hard time at the end of it. He, he said, you know, there were some, uh, there were some tears in the crowd and, and we got some laughs out of them too. But I think the biggest thing is, you know, if you can connect with people in a way that makes sense to them mm -hmm. and they then go and, you know, participate in the auctions and give money back to the foundation. I think at the end of the day, that's what it's all about is helping, uh, helping the foundation and helping and the people within the, the community. Um, yeah, that's so the most important thing. That's the most important thing right there. Very rewarding. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Where do you see uh, the two organizations going in the future? So where would you like to see the coffee headed in the future? Oh, man. I, you know, I want it to, to continue to grow so we can keep giving back. Okay. Our goal, like I said earlier, was to be holding that huge cardboard uh, check mm -hmm. and being able to give back large sums of money to the different foundations that support the community. The bigger we get, the more we can give back. And that's my hope and dream that we can continue to grow and get our message out there and what we're trying to do to, to help these guys and, and their families. Yeah. So listen, all the listeners out there, the only way we're going to be able to get them that big cardboard check is if we buy some coffee. So you got to buy the coffee and it's a great product. So why not? And you know, yeah. you're going to be drinking coffee in the morning anyway. So why not do it? I mean, yeah. and now you know that the money's going to a good place. Yeah, um, you're absolutely right. How do you see the uh, uh, bone frog seller? Is there anything on the horizon for them? Any new products that you're looking at uh, new varietal, anything like that? So this year, the Chardonnay is our new varietal. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, it's so new that we really haven't even started promoting it on social media or anything yet. So this is kind of the, um, uh, letting it out of the box kind it's of thing. here. Well, that's good. Unveiling, so good. to speak. I like yeah. it. So it's super exciting, uh, having a white wine and, and being able to talk about it and, and sell it. So that's really cool. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, yeah, yeah we're, we're doing, um, I, I was, like I was saying to you before, uh, the show, uh, our, our family, we, you know, every year we make, uh, 
I think each share is about 12 cases per, per person. We're about six shares total. So you could do the math on that for, for yeah. all my math guys out there uh, of what we make. So we're a pretty, pretty good size operation. Um, this year we're doing a uh, Pinot Grigio uh, and we're also doing a, um, it's a Cabernet Merlot Cap Franc uh, nice. blend and, really just very happy with it. Now we do everything in stainless steel. Uh, we don't really mess with the barrels at all. It's just easier, especially without some lab equipment and all that kind of stuff, just to, to keep it as simple as possible. Um, my uncle is kind of the mad scientist in the background with the numbers and hitting the gravities and making sure everything, all your yeah. sugars are right. And, uh, you know, your temperatures during fermentation are just right. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and all our grapes come from Sonoma. Um, okay. we have, we have a guy that, that, ships them over. They come in a truck. We take it right off the truck, right into the bladder press and we go. Um, I'm sorry, right into the crusher and then we go. It then goes into fermentation, then bladder press later. Um, wow. So you're yeah. not just buying juice. You're actually getting grapes. No, we're, over. yep, yep. We're going grapes, oh. the whole deal. We're having a lot of fun. How long have you been doing that, Jason? So my uncle was doing it first. Uh, he did it by himself since the eighties. He started with like juice yeah. and that type of stuff. And then my father and myself got involved with it about 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we, so the three of us have been doing it together now for about 15 years. And they're teaching you how to, to make wine. Yes. Yeah. So I started in the beer world. I was brewing beer at home for, for quite some time. Yeah. So we would always geek out. We talk, I would talk about beer and they would talk about wine. And then slowly but surely, they, they recruited me into the, the winemaking to kind of keep the, actually, fa the, yeah. the family legacy. <laughs> I did the same thing. I, I uh, brewed beer for a long time at home. And I think I, I, that gives you a really good background. It's kind of a, a little ke chemistry experiment. It really is. And, and that kind of stuff. Um, it's really, really fun to do. And so, you know, sitting down and learning about the wines and, and that kind of stuff, we knew starting out what we wanted and, um, you know, talking through all that stuff with the winemaker and, and the science that goes into making a good wine, you know, they're keeping track of the temperature on the day that the grapes are harvested. They're keeping track of the amount of water, uh, the soil that it's in, mm -hmm. the direction of the sun and all that kind of stuff. It's really amazing. Um, so I've learned so much through this process uh, from the very beginning on how to make the wine that you want. And my partner, David and I, um, we wanted a wine, you know, Walla Walla has been kind of known for uh, big fruit forward fruit bombs. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to have something that was a little bit more old world, a little bit more balanced in its flavor profile and I think Caleb working with him and talking to him about what we wanted really kind of nailed it um, right out of the gates with our, our first vintage. Uh, it's amazing. That's really cool. That's very cool. And it's cool just to see that you kind of, you jumped right into it. You know, you just kind of, uh, this is what we want to do. Found the, your, your, your winemaker and rock and roll. Let's go. Um, now you, you spent some time in Germany, you said. Yes. So, now, would you ever do a Gewürztraminer? I don't know. That's, a, I mean, that's one of my personal favorites, and not many people know that grape. Um, it's, it's I don't know if they make it in Washington. They do. It's a very sweet dessert wine. Yeah. Um, they make a dry version of it that's a little spicy. Okay. Um, uh, they just I, – I forget how they uh, – I think they just use a different yeast for the, um, for the dry version. Um, but it is a very popular dessert wine as well. Yeah, absolutely. It is. Yeah. Um, but that was always one of my favorites. It's uh, that's a, it, and I love saying it too. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a cool name. It's a cool name. It's good. It's, it's a, cool uh, I translate to spicy grape, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. my, my German uh, serves me correct. <laughs> but, um, listen, I, I'm having a blast talking to you. I'm enjoying our conversation, but I want to make sure that I give you an opportunity to plug everything where people can get more information, uh, where they can find the products. If they're in any local stores in any areas, please let us know about that as well. Um, and social media, all that kind of fun stuff. Okay. There's one last thing that I, I want to talk about Oh, please on our, on our websites. Um, I created something called 
uh, focal point page yes. and what focal point is all about. And um, what I'm trying to do with this whole thing is to help fellow veterans. And so I was thinking about this and, you know, we all get out of the military or whether we retire or separate or whatever it is. And we go our separate ways, which didn't make sense to me. And when we were in and working in platoons and, and working together as teammates, we could do all these just amazing things, right? Then we get out and we go our separate ways and we don't help each other out. So I wanted to create a place where I could promote my fellow veteran businesses. And so I just started adding businesses onto this page. And I do things like what's behind me um, mm -hmm. with Uncommon Grit and Darren McBurnett. And I just talk about their businesses. And this is an amazing book back here. If you get a chance to buy this, Darren was a BUDS instructor and uh, became a photographer and um, created a book that kind of walks you through BUDS in this cool book. The other one behind me is Sons of Valor that we already talked mm -hmm. about. So I added all these people onto my website and I talk about them periodically whenever I come on a podcast or a radio show or something like that, just to help them out. And when I talk to them and I say, hey, imagine what we can do together than what we could do separately. And, and people are starting to get on board with this and liking the idea of working together and helping each other out. So if you get a chance, if you're out there listening, go onto our websites and look at the focal point page and look at these different businesses and support them as well. Um, I think that's really, really important. Um, how you can find us, we're online, bonefrog-coffee.com. Go there, you can order online, bonefrogsellers.com. Go there, you can order our wine. We're on social media, we're on Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, go to those, follow us. We'll follow you back. Um, help us promote some of the, my favorite things that people do is uh, when they get their products, they post pictures, they talk about it. They tell us what they think. They give their reviews. I, those are my, my favorite uh, postings and I'll write you back and, and uh, repost your pictures and all that stuff. We actually, we really love that. And we want, we want everybody to join our team uh, to help this grow and get bigger so we can give more back to the different communities that we support. Yeah. And just remember everybody out there in this new world of multimedia and social media marketing and all of that, you are part of a team when you buy a product, you yeah. By buying the product and posting online and posting reviews and all of that, you are now basically part of the marketing campaign. Um, I, I don't think people realize how important they are to the businesses that they support, especially if you are supporting veteran-owned businesses and all of that. You are part of their team because a lot of these businesses can't afford to get commercial time on radio or TV or anything like that they rely on you posting that picture and saying, Hey, yeah, I did like this product. You should try that. Yeah. That's so. really important. Thank you for saying that Jason, because you know, we, we are a small veteran owned business and we really rely on the customers to help support us, not only, you know, by buying our products, but also posting on the different social media platforms and getting our messaging out there. And for all of you that do that, we are so grateful and appreciative of your support and, and thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it is very important. Um, but I also love what you're doing with focal point. I think it's you, you're hitting a key um, problem. I think of when we leave the military, we forget that we never did anything by ourselves in the military. <laughs> you, you always had somebody, you had a yeah. wingman, you had, like I you know. said, you were in the platoon, whatever the case may be. Right. You always had somebody right there. Why we, all of a sudden decide the moment we get out that we're going to go dash off on our own and be this independent. I don't need anybody's help. It, it doesn't make any sense to me and we all do it. So please check out focal point. Um, you know, check out all these different businesses, help support your local veteran businesses, help support the support these businesses that, that, uh, that Tim's talking about. And uh, you know, that's how we're all going to grow when we grow this network. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, you know, people talk about supporting veterans and wanting to help out. This is how you do it. Yep. Um, 
and I wanted to bring everybody together and help support their businesses. And I'm going to keep adding businesses on there. And I don't care if they're Navy, Army, Air Force. I want to help everybody. Um, and I want to help their businesses grow. And, you know, I think if we all come back together and help each other, it's the way to do it. For sure. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's really the only way we succeed. You got to help the next person up. And, you know, if they're, if they're just breaking out, you pull them up. If you already have some success, that's the best way to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. Tim, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. I've had a blast talking to you. We've talked about coffee. We've talked about wine. I mean, what's better? You know, how, what, what better way to spend an evening than uh, talking about wine and coffee? I mean, I it's, agree. It, it's, it's the best way to be. Um, I love what you're doing, giving back to the community. I love your products. Uh, I actually have an order in for some coffee coming uh, very soon. So I'm going to be looking forward to drinking that um, when I start my day off. Uh, and I'll, I'll definitely enjoy it. I'm going with the medium roast myself. Um, but uh, we'll, 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 we'll be uh, tackling that one. <laughs> we may actually have to swap some wine back and forth. Yes. No, we Save definitely have that. To do that. I want to try yours. Yes, I would. Yeah. I would love to do that. I'd love to hear uh, what you think. We and we do the same thing. We walk into a party or whatever the case may be, and we slam that bottle down right in the middle of the table. We want that conversation to start. That's and, right. Hey, how did you do this? How did you get involved with this? It's great. Yeah. You know. So. I love it. But uh, again, thank you so much for coming on the show. Everybody out there, please try out Bone Frog Coffee, Bone Frog Sellers. Try out these products; they're amazing. Thank you so much, Jason. I appreciate it. All right. You have a great day, Tim. Thanks. You too. Thanks for having me.